a man who has been a leader in American manufacturing, particularly in the electronic sector, and uh, a great innovator, uh, inventor, entrepreneur, and uh, advocate for the electronics industry is our next speaker. I'm proud to say uh, Shalaba Kumar is a member of our Committee on the Present Danger of China. He hosted a remarkable program that we did um, in one of his facilities in the Chicago area about two years ago, I believe now, before the uh, biological warfare attack by the Chinese Communist Party made uh, such meetings difficult. Um, Shelley is uh, a very influential figure in the electronics industry and has been raising the alarm about what has been done to take it down by the designs and activities, uh, the unrestricted warfare in short of the Chinese Communist Party and by uh, our acquiescence to it. Um, indeed, I, he may tell a story about uh, people in his industry who actually allowed the Chinese to replicate entirely their manufacturing facilities. In some cases, they wound up transferring them lock, stock, and barrel to China, the effect of which has been devastating, as we established in that program two years ago. Shali is the chairman and CEO of a company he owns called AVG Advanced Technology, and we're delighted to have him with us. Thank you, Shali, for joining us. And uh, tell us about the electronics industry in America and the example that it represents of supply chain vulnerability to China. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Frank, for uh, leading the charge on this very, very important matter. Uh, uh, most of you know that uh, CPDC actually um, uh, goes back to all the way 60s and 70s, uh, and uh, Reagan was a prominent member of it, uh, even though the enemy at that time was uh, was uh, Soviet Union. Now, Soviet Union uh, had a, a lot of power, just nuclear power, but it was not an economic power, uh, so it was relatively easier. But uh, uh, today, the task uh, with the present uh, enemy is a lot, lot tougher uh, because uh, here is what uh, the prediction is. If the things continue as they are, China by their 100th anniversary, 2049, will be an $80 trillion economy and the US at best will be a $40 trillion economy, half the size of the economy we will not be the technology leader. We will not be the manufacturing leader. Uh, China will be the number one, uh, the biggest power. And we know all uh, what uh, China represents, the CCP represents. So it's a, it's a grave threat to the uh, United States, to India, and to all freedom-loving people. Uh, this whole thing is a, is, is a big uh, Big challenge. In, in fact, um, I'm in the process of uh, writing a book, uh, Chinese Colonization of America 2049. Uh, and the only man who can stop it is, guess you guys, guys know, President Trump. Uh, and actually, he loves the, uh, uh, the title of the book. Um, it should be uh, on your way uh, sometime soon. But I would like to start my presentation by a, a quote from Admiral Yamamoto, who's known as the reluctant enemy architect of Pearl Harbor. He said, anyone who has seen the auto factories in Detroit and the oil fields in Texas knows that Japan lacks the national power for a naval race with America. Its industrial base, base makes America invincible. And what's happening here, uh, it, it just tells you the importance of manufacturing. Uh, importance of manufacturing, what uh, China has done. Uh, China is waging a uh, unrestricted war, but a long-term war. They plan five years, 10 years, 15 years, 25 years, 
And unfortunately, uh, just like our uh, General Spalding, Robert Spalding has written uh, how American elite got taken in. They were just silent or they were oblivious. They did not see what is coming. And uh, uh, whether it's, uh, and it's, it's irrespective of party politics, whether it was Republicans or whether it's Democrats, they, they all uh, supported China in that effort to become the manufacturing superpower of the world. Now, everybody's worried about Taiwan. Uh, 65% of all chips come from Taiwan. And guess what happens if China takes over Taiwan or shuts down that chip factory? Uh, you know, you talk about, uh, sure, drugs and all that is extremely important. But if China shuts down TMSC, 65% of the chips, your phones, your computers, your internet, just the way we are communicating right now, all will come to a grinding halt. It'll be a major, major problem. But anyway, going back to uh, our own story, AVG is into lots of electronics uh, uh, manufacturing companies and owns several companies. And uh, 1999 timeframe, uh, we were the sixth largest manufacturer of printed circuit boards and electronic components. And we were also among the top 20 electronic contract manufacturers, like manufacturing goods for uh, IBM, for Apple, for uh, uh, people like that, you know, for General Motors. So we were manufacturing electronic goods. That was our contract manufacturing business. Those two industries were $70 billion per year, employing about 700,000 direct uh, employees it had and indirectly supporting another factor of three, so 2.1, so total of 2.8 million jobs in just this part of electronics manufacturing industry. China devised a plan and executed the plan phenomenally well within five years, that $70 billion business got reduced to less than 100 million a year. From 70 billion to 100 million a year, that's how the, uh, everybody in the industry, um, uh, manufacturers and PC boards, manufacturing contract manufacturing, they all had to declare bankruptcy. And look at their plan, how smart the Chinese acted. Because when you go bankrupt, then all your equipment, there was almost like, a, $10 billion, maybe 10 to $20 billion worth of equipment, capital equipment, which because the industry died, uh, it had uh, no customers. And guess what? China bought, the Chinese government, CCP, bought this 10 to $20 billion worth of uh, capital equipment for 10th of a penny, 10th of a penny on a dollar. So not only they destroyed uh, the electronics manufacturing. Uh, they also uh, got so much equipment uh, essentially for free. And uh, that is their, their plan. They again executed uh, uh, wonderfully. Uh, I have been an observer of, of uh, China, of CCP, uh, for, for over 50 years uh, as a young student uh, when they waged a war on India in 1962 and Tibet, and, uh, and after that, uh, uh, business uh, uh, dealings with the uh, Chinese. Uh, and I also actually saw their plan in starting it late uh, 80s, 88, 89, they started a plan to attract the companies like Motorola, companies like uh, uh, General Electric, uh, and so many of the uh, very prominent companies in the uh, Chicago land. That's where I'm from. And um, uh, what they offered, what CCP offered to these companies, that they will create factories for them for a dollar a year lease for 99 years. I think have already heard a fascinating tale 
of what the implications are of our dependency on China. And what we were just getting to was the good part about the systematic way in which the Chinese brought about uh, the takedown of the electronics industry in the United States. Uh, those numbers are, are simply staggering. Um, the $70 billion per year, as well as the total workforce employed of 2.1 billion, excuse me, million uh, Americans. It's um, unbelievable. And uh, what I'm hoping we will have a chance to visit with him about is what the status is now in terms of both um, productive output and um, the value of it, as well as, of course, the people employed in it. Uh, to give you a sneak preview in the program that uh, Shali hosted uh, several years ago now, um, he pulled together a number of colleagues from across that industrial sector in the Chicagoland area, as it happens, mostly, and um, uh, their tale of the deliberate takedown of their industries was uh, was quite impressive. Um, Shelly, I don't know if you know where you left off, but I think you were just getting to the heart of how the Chinese took down um, your sector of the U.S. economy. Um, if you can pick up where you left off, we're delighted to have you back. Thanks. So uh, back sorry, you. Frank. No Made problem. in China. Uh, iPad. <laughs> Zoom, Zoom, among other things. That's right. <laughs> Zoom, among other things. Yeah. Uh, so um, anyway, um, so, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, China makes a very definite uh, long-term plan and uh, how they execute it. Uh, again, they bought that uh, uh, 10 to $20 billion worth of equipment uh, for, for a tenth of a penny on the, on the dollar. Uh, so they accomplished their, uh, their mission. And um, uh, unless we stop this, unless we have sustained tariffs, uh, President Trump started on the right path, but the deep state within our government did not uh, help that process well either. You know, I'm, I'm pretty close to Peter Navarro. Uh, you know, he was the head of this, uh, the program. Uh, and when they actually uh, put tariffs on electronic goods, they chose the wrong category of uh, the SIC codes. And uh, so actually what happened is uh, for uh, a, a significant portion of the tariffs, it went in the wrong direction. It, it did not help our uh, electronics industry in a, in a way it, uh, it hurt. It, uh, you know, so what has, has to happen is we have to have negotiators with uh, China who understand manufacturing, who just totally understand manufacturing and uh, have sustained tariffs. That's one thing which is uh, uh, going to uh, be required. Uh, and I will tell your audience and your people, uh, I had a very uh, productive meeting with uh, President Trump uh, in uh, March on uh, 321 at uh, Mar-a-Lago, and we discussed all these different policies, uh, and we talked about China, and um, uh, I don't know if I want to uh, go public on saying what all he said uh, about China, but uh, he's with us. Uh, he loved the title of the book, uh, which is uh, uh, Chinese colonization of America 2049, and the only man who could stop it, uh, President Trump, because your everyday politicians, whether it's Democrats, whether it's uh, Republicans, whether it's Nancy uh, uh, Pelosi, Chuck, uh, or whether it's Mitch McConnell, or whether it's uh, uh, even, you know, Marco Rubio is uh, uh, quite a bit in, in uh, favor of waging. Uh, taking a tough stand on China, but uh, Chinese are very smart. They know how to play American politics. They know how to do that. You know, a, a country with a $14 trillion economy with the control of practically all that money by CCP, what's a million dollars or $2 million to throw here and there 
into various different political campaigns and and you know through uh, uh, bagmen to uh, sideways and influence American politics. Uh, you know, you you could tell by just the uh, the last uh, uh, 1.2 trillion dollar bill that Congress passed uh, with a provision for Made in America, uh, and uh, that's just a very empty promise for Made in America because uh, whereas they wrote the provision that Made in America would be required, but two paragraphs later they completely. Uh, uh, dismiss that by giving carte blanche authority to the agency heads that for any reason they could choose uh, Chinese products. So what that $1.2 trillion bill is, which in, in effect, uh, many, uh, many of my friends in the Republican Party supported, uh, they uh, guarantee, this bill essentially guarantees that the uh, American infrastructure, $1.2 trillion, will be built with Chinese products. There is a seemingly very strong hostility on the part of American uh, elites uh, in at least some sectors uh, to, and government for that matter, to uh, so-called industrial policy. Um, is what you're talking about in terms of competing successfully with matching, countering the very long range planning that the Chinese have historically done, um, a comparable kind of long-term governmentally sponsored and supported effort. Uh, and, and isn't that uh, what ostensibly this CHIPS Act was supposed to be about? Uh, and I'd ask you to, to to develop just a little bit more fully. It's my understanding that that American uh, chip manufacturers were among those lobbying uh, the Congress to amend this language so that they could um, do some of the manufacturing for their chips uh, in China, despite the whole point of this exercise being uh, trying to wean them from doing so. Industrial policy. Is this really what we need now? And uh, are we likely to be able to master it? Well, like I said, uh, uh, Frank, uh, it just depends on who is leading our country. Hmm. See, there is uh, pros and cons. Uh, you know you know that uh, I chair Republican Hindu coalition. Our number one uh, point there is plank is enterprise. Uh, free enterprise also has some limitations. And that is quite apparent in how corporate America operates. So there's a stock market. You have to have a quarterly report, annual report. So these corporations can think only a quarter, two quarters, a year at the most. Mm -hmm. So that is an inherent problem in our system. So there needs to be an industrial policy there needs to be uh, an action on the part of Congress and the president, the entire government of the United States to discourage corporate America to go to China. Because like, you know, he said, Chip, Chips Act, they, they still wanna have uh, their manufacturing done in China. Uh, and uh, somehow or the other, they're gonna figure it out uh, the Democrat-led CHIPS Act, what is going to happen is it's supposed to be $280 billion worth of investment um, unless there are people, patriots like President Trump, uh, and essentially non-political. Mm -hmm. uh, that money is also going to end up in China. So, you know, I, I just have a hunch about that, just like the $1.2 trillion um, uh, infrastructure bill uh, it is is going to end up. Uh, they they have enough maneuvering power to to lead it to having an investment uh, in in China. So uh, yes, industrial let, policy let, is needed. Let me follow up, uh, Shelley, if I may. Um, the the wrap on industrial policy, of course, is 
uh, that will wind up picking winners and losers, and that government, uh, at least in this country, is notoriously bad at doing that. Um, something that you'd said earlier, and I know you feel very strongly about, which is kind of a uh, an alternative, or maybe at least uh, something that can mitigate somewhat this uh, issue of, of the government being unhelpfully involved. Uh, you had recommended that there be uh, not only tariffs in the electronic sector, but sustained and targeted tariffs that would enable American industries here to see opportunities uh, and without the government directly picking any of them to, uh, to be the leading edge, they would naturally do so through the competitive process, but only if the competitors, the unfair competitors uh, from China were effectively excluded. Is that in fact something that uh, is at a minimum, you know, a complement to what you're talking about in, in industrial policy and possibly a, a more free market uh, approach to it? Yes, that's exactly, Frank. I, uh, I agree with you. Uh, yes, there needs uh, to be uh, an industrial policy which has sustained, you know, not you uh, sustain tariffs. Uh, because if you don't know whether those tariffs are going to be there six months from now, from a year from now, uh, how could uh, like companies like ours, uh, the industry which got demolished, can come back? You know, you were there in um, uh, in Chicago with uh, uh, ten or twelve uh, industrialists uh, who were directly impacted by uh, this Chinese invasion of uh, American manufacturing, and. Uh, so they all recommended sustained tariffs. If they're sustained tariffs uh, and they know these are going to continue, then they could plan. Uh, that's one. And number two, there is another one in industrial policy uh, without picking uh, winners and losers is to have like one year uh, depreciation on capital equipment. Mm -hmm. Have all your capital equipment uh, be uh, depreciated in one year, that will be a pretty big incentive for uh, for American manufacturers to uh, uh, to think more of the United States as the manufacturing base rather than China. Uh, along that side, there could be other tax benefits. So, you know, like CHIPS Act. I, I have not read the detail of the CHIPS Act, but companies who bring uh, manufacturing jobs and manufacturing back to the United States uh, could be given incentives, yes. tax incentives. So, you know, you could uh, make industrial policy based upon tariffs and tax incentives. Well, it is uh, maddening for those of us who've been exposed to this CHIPS Act uh, that, as you say, there are, seems to be this back door through which we can continue to do business as we have been, which completely defeats the purpose of it. 